Up to this point, we've talked about the atmosphere without talking about a major component that makes up what's in the air that we breathe. Now, typically there's air, which is mostly nitrogen and oxygen molecules, but there's also a presence of water, of plain old H2O, of water vapor that's in the atmosphere. How does that water vapor get there, and how does that have an effect on the weather that we experience? Well, it gets there through three major processes, and they all involve the sun heating up the water at the surface, causing it to turn into a vapor, vaporize, and then carry it up into the atmosphere. So it's caused from sublimation, which is the sun heating up ice at the surface and then causing the layer just at the top of that ice to vaporize and be carried up into the uh, atmosphere. It's caused from something called transpiration, which is a byproduct of plants using water as uh, the, the process that they, they create food through photosynthesis. That water is taken up from sunlight or it's vaporized by sunlight and taken into the atmosphere. And then it's caused from evaporation, which you're probably familiar with, which is liquid water vaporizing as the sun warms it up. So all three of those processes are gonna introduce water vapor into the atmosphere. Okay, now we don't usually notice water in the atmosphere. You typically can't just wave your hand around and then come up with small water droplets on your hand from the atmosphere. So where is that water going? It's being absorbed into the atmosphere. It's almost as if that water is dissolving into atmosphere, the same way your sugar dissolves into your coffee in the morning if you take it with sugar a little bit of what you've put into the atmosphere is absorbing into it. But the air can only absorb so much of that moisture. At a certain point, it's become saturated. It can't take any more of the moisture, and that moisture has to go somewhere. Where it goes is it condenses onto what are called condensation nuclei in the atmosphere, particulate matter, dust, uh, carcinogens from the stuff that we're burning on the surface, anything that's up there in the sky can have water condense around it. This is where clouds come from. Clouds will happen. Clouds will form if the air isn't able to absorb any more moisture and it's got to sort of park it somewhere else. Now, the ability of air to absorb moisture, the ability of air to absorb water is related to its temperature. You can think of the coffee metaphor again here, right? You know, I, I, I love Dunkin' Donuts. I don't know about where you get your morning coffee from, but I love going to Dunkin'. And what I used to do, especially in the summer months, was I'd get an iced coffee instead of a hot coffee. And if you, if you know Dunkin' Donuts, you know that they put a lot of sugar in your coffee. For me, it's too much sugar, but when I was younger, I didn't mind having so much of that sugar in there, but they really load it up. And what you notice is that in the iced coffee, you take a sip of that iced coffee and you're going to notice that there's little bits of sugar hitting your tongue. You can actually feel the granular sugar. Whereas when you get a hot coffee and they put that same massive amount of sugar in there, you don't notice it. You notice how sweet it is. You notice the taste, but you don't notice the actual feel of the grains of sugar in there. So it's the same amount of sugar. In the case of the atmosphere, it's the same amount of water vapor that's going in there. But because the what you're talking about, coffee in my case, uh, air in the atmosphere's case has gotten colder, the ability of it to absorb whatever you've put into it is reduced. So the colder air becomes saturated a lot more easily. You can't hold as much moisture at colder temperatures. The iced coffee can't hold sugar. The colder uh, atmosphere can't hold as much moisture. So what goes on is that as temperatures drop, they get close to what's called their dew point, the temperature that if they fall to, the air will be saturated. It will no longer be able to hold any more moisture, and it's at that temperature that clouds will form. So what you see in this image here is you see, uh, starting at the surface, uh, you have basically a column of air that starts at the surface, and we have three columns to describe what's going on in the air. The first one is the temperature dew point spread. This is the difference between the temperature of the air and its dew point. And then you see in that second column what those temperature and dew points are. It'll be 25 Celsius and 12 and a half degrees for the dew point. So the spread is just you take that temperature at 25 and you subtract the dew point at 12 and a half to get a spread of 12 and a half. This is the difference between the temperature and the dew point. And it is related to something called relative humidity, which is 
how far away that air is from being fully saturated for having the formation of clouds. Now remember, air cools as it rises, and there's a rate that air cools at as it rises. The rate that it cools at depends on if it's dry or moist air. In other words, it depends on if it's um, saturated or unsaturated. So th there's fancy terms for this dry adiabatic rate and wet adiabatic rate. We're not going to get into that. Let's just take the example that we have here for what that lapse rate of temperature is. So notice in the second column, we're starting with 25 degrees of temperature and 12 and a half dew point. And then as I get up to the next level, the temperature drops to 22 and the dew point drops to 12. So you got a drop in both the temperature and the dew point, but you have a bigger drop off in temperature than you have in dew point. So have a look there in that first column, in the spread column, and notice that as we get higher and higher, the spread is getting lower and lower, meaning that our temperatures are getting closer and closer to our dew point. As your temperature and your dew point get closer, the relative humidity, the percentage of saturation of the air goes up higher and higher and higher to where you go to that uh, line just below the white dashed line there where it's a dew point spread of two and a half, temperature 13, dew point 10 and a half, and a relative humidity of 85%. And then we're gonna raise that air a little bit more. And then guess what happens? Your temperature and dew point are now the same. 10 degrees temperature, 10 degree dew point. The relative humidity is 100%. The air is saturated. It can no longer hold any more moisture. It's not that there's more moisture in the air. It's just that that same amount, it's gone from hot coffee to cold to iced coffee. So now you're gonna start to see condensation that extra stuff has to go somewhere, that extra moisture has to go somewhere. And this is where clouds form. So what's called the lifting condensation level, that dashed white line is the point where the temperature and the dew point come together and you have a formation of clouds.